Good evening, everybody. From uh, Saline County on a uh, Tuesday night of uh, high school basketball, it's Dave McKenzie and my partner Scott Hudson, where the Carterville Lions are preparing to take on the Harrisburg Bulldogs here. As uh, Scott, I think there's, what, only three, four games left in the season if we count the, the regional games. But uh, uh, this season has uh, flown by, and we, we can quickly see the end uh, of the regular season uh, just around the corner. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's already the middle of February, but uh, the Lions still stuck on three wins. Tough loss at Sparta on Saturday night, playing a Harrisburg team tonight that's won 20 games so far this season. They are coming into this game having lost their last three, so they're not happy campers. They're not going to be gracious hosts for the Lions tonight. No, and uh, this is a, a a Carterville team, Scott, that just is struggling mightily, and it was never more apparent than it was on Saturday night. Um, Carterville came into uh, action at Sparta with uh, uh, three wins. And one of those three over the Sparta Bulldogs at home earlier in the season, back in January. Um, but then uh, Sparta was able to, to battle four, seven down at the end of the third. Carterville had a seven-point lead, and Sparta comes back and gets the 59, um, third, or excuse me, the 50-43 um, uh, win uh, over the Lions. And, and it's, it was a disheartening loss in every way. Carterville turned the ball over. And, and it was frustrating. You could see it on the players on the floor. You could see it in the eyes of Coach Shane Hawkins when he came up after, in the post game. And uh, it's, it's just something this, they're going to have to battle through. This season now, in my opinion, is you're playing for pride. And you need a couple of wins. You need to show how tough you are, how big your heart is, and, and hope that you can get into regionals and make a little bit of noise. Yeah, and for underclassmen, they're playing for jobs next year. I mean, they're auditioning right now for yeah. next year. You know, the, the, the Sparta game, you're up by seven going into the fourth quarter. That's a spot that Carterville hasn't been in many times this year, up in the fourth quarter, and they just, you know, they couldn't handle it. Uh, they turned the ball over, and, you know, one of the things that we've, we've noticed from the first game to this game, which I think this is game 27, I think, uh, of the season, Carterville still does not handle the ball well. Carterville still does not shoot the ball well as a team. And so much is asked of Justin Johnson, the senior, that we always talk about, you know, how much, how much gas does he have left in the tank? But you're right. Right now, these next three regular season games, as hard as you can for as long as you can, and Coach Hawkins will take that every day. And hope that good things come out of it, you know. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. The Lions, they're out on the floor warming up, getting ready to take on uh, Coach Randy Smith-Peters and the Harrisburg Bulldogs. They come into this game tonight 20-7 and seven on the season. Your Lions, as we mentioned, Scott, you were correct. It's the 27th game. They're 3-24 and 24 on the year. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the Bank of Carbondale's Carterville Banking Center. The Bank of Carbondale offers a variety of business and personal banking services, including checking accounts, online banking, and mobile banking. For more information, stop by the Carterville Banking Center and visit their website at tboc.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Oh, by the way, happy anniversary. Yes, I, I agree. Two years ago tonight. Two correct? years ago tonight, we did our very first live stream because there was ice in the area and, and there wasn't a lot of people that were going to make the trip. And so we did that. And we wound up with a, a whole ton of people watching the game live that night. And uh, we've been doing games ever since, football and basketball. So uh, happy anniversary to YouTube and uh, to uh, everybody that watches this on our YouTube channel. We're glad to have you here on News Radio WJPF. You can listen online at WJPF.com or, as we mentioned, on the live stream. Go and search Carterville Lions versus Harrisburg Bulldogs. We're going to take our first break on our Carbon, Carbon, Bank of Carbon no, Car pregame show. I'll get it right. Um, when we come back, we're going to get it continue to break down this game between the Lions and the Bulldogs on News Radio WJPF. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Local 702 represents more than electricians. The IBEW is made up of Southern Illinois linemen, tree trimmers, telephone workers, utility workers, city employees, factory workers, construction workers, and many more. So when you support the IBEW, you're really supporting Health Bank, Southern Illinois, a Blazer place. Put your trust in the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 702, providing a better lifestyle for members and a better life for all. First Southern Bank, a Southern Illinois-owned bank, where local people and local decisions help you with all your financial choices. Our mission at First Southern Bank is simple, to represent community banking at its best. If you're looking for local, personal service, visit them today at any of their 15 locations. 
Ann Marion, Carbondale, Carverville, El Durango, Crown Springs, Grand Tower, Cameron Hills, Murfreesboro, Royalton, and Heron. Or visit them on the web at FirstSouthernBank.net. First Southern Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Hey, you know people just cannot get enough of Polar Whip. Now, of course, Polar Whip, Route 148 North in Energy, home of the famous Polar Whip hamburger. You can call ahead and they'll have your order ready for you to pick up. That's number 988 9210. Remember that. We'll come back to that later. But they've got platters where you can save even more money. They've got hot dogs, barbecues. Did you know they've got the, the cheese, the Aztec fried pickles, fried green beans, and tamales? Don't forget about tamales. Here's that number again, 988-9210. They'll have your order ready when you get there. Back in Harrisburg, it's Dave McKenzie and Scott Hudson. We want to say congratulations to Coach Matt Crane and the Lady Carterville Lions as uh, they played in the semifinals of uh, the regional being played at Carterville. Scott, the ladies, they wind up with a 44-27 win over Marion. And right now they're watching the Alney Murphy's Burrow game. And they're going to play the winner of that game coming up Thursday for the regional final. And I believe Alney's the higher seed in that game. So it looks like the Alney uh, Tigers, Richland East County, whatever yep. they're called. Yep. Uh, uh, but uh, Carterville's, the Carterville girls are doing what a lot of people expect them to, win at home. They won big uh, tonight. One more win, and they'll be headed to the sectionals next week. And uh, it's uh, it's been a, a good year for uh, the ladies, and uh, they've got great senior leadership. They've got some young uh, players that in the key positions at the point um, uh, with um, Barton and um, then uh, Janae. Thompson in there in the paint. She's a beast and, and just great uh, help on the perimeter. But uh, they'll play on Thursday night. And uh, actually, I think we're going to live stream that game um, Thursday night at home uh, when the Lion, Lady Lions play. So that is going to be cool. Here we are uh, just a few minutes away from uh, the tip-off for the Carterville Lions as they get ready to take on Harrisburg. As we mentioned, Carterville coming off just a, a, a terribly tough weekend, uh, a, a road loss at Nashville. 59 to 34 in that game 16 turnovers and then on Saturday night the loss 50 to 43 in that game 17 turnovers that has been the bug that has bitten the Lions all season long and you got to think if 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 Carterville can control the turnovers here they're going to be in the game uh, when the when it comes down toward toward the end of it well as I said earlier Harrisburg's lost three games in a row uh, they're not playing real, real well right now and they know Carterville's record. They know that Carterville's only won three games, so they may take Carterville a little lightly. I think for Carterville, any game here on out, they have got to have good first quarters. They've got to get out of the gates quickly, force the other team to play from behind because that has not been the case very often this year. Well, and, and they did that on Saturday at Sparta. Compare that to Friday night at Nashville when they only scored two points in the first quarter and Nashville was up 14. It was 16-2 at the end of one. At Sparta, Carterville, Sparta was up 15 to 12. Carterville hung 12 points in that first quarter. So it's, uh, you know, they, they, they need to, like you said, they need to put some points up early and, uh, and show Harrisburg that they're they're here to play ball tonight. I think that's that's a key. And 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 because I promise you, Shane Hawkins talked about the pride, the heart uh, in, to his team this week. I, I promise you, that's the conversation he had. And um, so we'll we'll see how that goes. We're going to go on and take another break. When we come back, we'll continue on our pregame show, this uh, Lions broadcast. It is brought to you by the Bank of Carbondale's Carterville Banking Center, where they offer the convenience of mobile banking. You can stay connected on the go with the Bank of Carbondale's mobile banking app. To learn more, visit the website at tboc.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. We'll continue here on News Radio WJPF. Serving Senator Royce since 1937. 
Hey everybody on YouTube, thanks for watching so far. Welcome back. Uh, Tuesday night action here on News Radio WJPF as uh, Scott and I are just moments away from bringing you uh, the play by play action of the Lions as they take on the uh, uh, Harrisburg Bulldogs. Um, um, Carter, or excuse me, Harrisburg comes in to the game 20 and 7 on the season. Uh, Carterville uh, with the 3 and 24 mark. And of course, Carterville's had some injuries as well. Um, uh, the the uh, forward, uh, Dylan Moore, uh, rolled his ankle. I don't believe he's dressed. I see him in street clothes on the bench. And then you have uh, Grant Garby that uh, injured that knee a couple of weeks back. Those are two big hits for Shane Hawkins and his Lions. Yeah, usually when things aren't going well, those are the things that seem to happen to a team. Injuries uh, are part of the game, obviously. But you look at, yeah, go back to Carville's football season. They were ravaged with injuries. Now the basketball team's been hit uh, with some injuries. This, this Harrisburg team, though, they have one of the better players in the conference, they Isaiah do. Salisbury. Averaging 19.2 points a game. He can go inside. He can go outside. Very smooth. And then they've got the big boy, the one I like to call the wide body, uh, Bartow on the inside. He is going to be a load for whoever, draw, whoever draws that assignment, whether it be Austin Garby or Connor Henderson. Uh, those two are the only two players averaging in double figures. But Salisbury's the guy to watch tonight. Uh, the One of the bright spots for the Lions coming out of the injuries uh, to uh, Grant and to uh, Dylan Moore has been the play of uh, Carterville's Fidel Campbell, the 6'1 forward. He didn't see a lot of action early on in the season, uh, but I tell you what, the other night he winds up at Sparta. Um, he had, uh, let me look back at my notes, he had uh, 14 points in that game, and he, he did play with heart, and, and he, he had some uh, great defensive uh, rebounds, a couple of big offensive rebounds, a couple of nice assists, uh, to Justin Johnson as well. Also got to give a, 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 uh, some a credit to uh, Bryce Anderson. Bryce Anderson stands 5'4", 5 5'5". 5 5. He took a charge from uh, uh, Boston, Isaac Boston, um, who stands 6'4", and hung right in there. So Carterville's got it in him uh, to play with Hart and, and, and maybe maybe get an upset here at Harrisburg tonight. We're going to go on and take our final pregame break as uh, we are preparing for the national anthem. We come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip. You're listening to Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. Back at Hammersburg on uh, Tuesday evening, uh, high school basketball action. Uh, we just uh, completed the national anthem. Coach Randy Smith-Peters and Shane Hawkins and Dennis Drust and assistants from uh, Harrisburg come together, shake hands. The players shake at midcourt as well. And uh, we're just a couple of minutes away from starting. Scott, there's, I, I'm, we're kind of lucky some of the games that we get to call in the locations. We were at Nashville. Assembly Hall is a historic 
uh, venue, just mm-hmm. the number of wins that have been played in that in that building. But then Sparta, I love the upgrades that they've had at Sparta that we got to see Saturday night. We get to go to West Frankfurt for the Midwinter Classic, and I have to say, coming here to Harrisburg in the Quonset Hut is uh, is quite quite an experience as well. Well, everybody calls this place the, the airport hangar which it looks like one, but it's been here a long, long time. We have a great view. We can look right down on the on the action. Uh, so, yeah, we get to go to some very, very and, – and, and it's, it's, it's funny, a lot of the a lot of the ones that, that we like doing games from, football and basketball, are some of the older ones. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's kind of the crazy thing. Uh, we're blessed with the, with the facilities we have at Carterville um, and, and love uh, the sight lines and, yes. and where we're at. But uh, it's pretty neat when you're sitting up here. And actually, at this uh, location, we're behind a, a couple of panes of glass. And um, if I lean forward, I'm going to sweat on the people below me, though. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, well, don't, don't jump. I won't jump, I promise. Unless you push me, which is no. an entirely a pos- entire possibility. <laughs> Amy did not give me enough money to do that. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> uh, the Carterville Lions have just been introduced, and it's going to be uh, the same starting five that we've seen over the course of the last uh, few uh, games. As uh, Fidel Campbell, number 23, is going to get the start at the forward position, the 6-1 forward. Also, it's going to be Dylan Valerius at the point, the 5-11 guard, where's number three. Justin Johnson, number five. Comes into uh, the game averaging about uh, 16, 17 points a game. As a matter of fact, at, uh, at Sparta, he wound up with uh, 12 points. And at Harrisburg, or excuse me, at Nashville had a way off night as he only had five points in that game. They need some points out of JJ tonight. Also getting the start is going to be Connor Henderson, the 6'4 uh, forward. And uh, then it will be Austin Garby, the 5'10 uh, forward. Uh, for Coach Shane Hawkins. So it'll be Valerius Johnson, Henderson, Garby, and Fidel Campbell. Getting the start for Carterville, or for Harrisburg is going to be 5'11 guard Hunter Smith. Where's number 20? Also, number 22, Brayden Storms is getting the start for Coach Randy Smith-Peter. Isaiah Salisbury, he's... he's He's all everything for Harrisburg, the 6'3 guard at uh, where's number 23. Number 40, Dalton Lambert, uh, the 6'4 forward. And then it will be number 42, Jordan Bartow, the 6'0 center um, that um, is uh, rounds out the, the starting five. So it'll be Smith, Storms, Salisbury, Lambert, and Bartow for Coach Randy Smith-Peters. Well, again, Carterville's got to get off to a good start. Too many games this year, they've gotten off to a bad start, and because of their inability to score as a team, they're ne- never able to come back from, from a deficit in the first half. Um, Harrisburg's a very good team, 20 wins on the season. Salisbury, one, one of the best players in the south. So Carterville's going to have their hands full tonight. They are, as uh, both teams are getting their final instructions uh, from their head coaches. Shane Hawkins to our left, and uh, Randy Smith-Peters to our right. Harrisburg in the home whites this evening. Carterville in the road blues with the orange numbers. And I was told, I think that this is Randy Smith-Peters' 25th year I'm, as a head wouldn't coach. Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. He's the, the Smith-Peters in Harrisburg High School, pretty synonymous. Yep. And... Uh, so it's ready to go. The officials are ready. The ball is in the air, and it is going to be the Harrisburg Bulldogs that control the tip. They're going to be moving from our right to left, and we appreciate you tuning in here on News Radio WJPF. Over toward the right side, that is uh, Salisbury, Isaiah Salisbury, number 22. He does it all, gets the pass down low. They get it to uh, Dalton Lambert. He's able to bank it home, and he gets the foul, so he'll go to the line and shoot the N1. Didn't take Harrisburg long to get the ball to, on the inside. They've got the size advantage on Carterville tonight. So Lambert makes the bucket, and he's at the line. Free throw is off the front of the iron, and Carterville controls. Here come the Lions. Justin Johnson brings it up the right side, works it toward the right corner, and we have a whistle and a foul right off the get-go, and that's going to be off uh, Jordan Bartow, his first of the game. Each team with one now as we are just underway, 25 seconds into the contest. 
Carterville will trigger from underneath the backboard. Justin Johnson on the right wing to Dylan Valerius. He left-hand dribbles to the left side, leaves it for Henderson. Henderson right side to Garby. Garby back to Henderson, looks left, throws right to Garby. He tries uh, to get it down low, dribbles down the baseline, puts the shot up, has it blocked, and it's the other way. As it, But it goes out of bounds. Oh, I thought it was out of bounds. It was saved, and it is out of bounds, finally off to Bartow, and it's going to belong to the Carterville Lions. So a turnover each on that exchange. A little sloppy play on that possession, to say the least. Who slapped that ball out of Garby's hand when he shot, though? Man, it got come out like away. I didn't even see where they came from. I think it was Salisbury. One thing about Harrisburg, this is always a physical game, and you can tell already they're getting up and, and putting the chest on, on the guy with the ball for the Carterville Lions. They'll play you tight um, up for the full um, game. Justin Johnson fires from three. Uh, Dylan Valerius went over the back to get the rebound. No foul call. Bartow has it, and he finally gets fouled, and they're going to call that on Fidel Campbell. Not on, a smart foul right there. No. On most high school football teams, Bartow would be a guard or a center. On Harrisburg's football team, he was a f running back. <laughs> yeah. How would you like to try to tackle that guy? He He's a handful. So it is Harrisburg with the ball over toward the right side. They bring it up top to Braden Storms. He drives down uh, the right side of the lane. A little floater off the back of the yard. No good. Campbell gets the rebound, loses it. Ball's on the floor. Garby's on it. He's able to get free and get it to Valerius. And Dylan brings it up uh, with a left-hand dribble. The length of the floor. Leaves it for Johnson. Now out top to Garby. Garby has the ball slapped out of his hands again. That is the second turnover on the Lions here early on. As Isaiah Salisbury drives right, hand layup is good. Yeah, he's just so smooth, whether he's on the inside or outside. He's, he's a tough matchup for anybody. He is. Austin Garby has the ball on the right side for the Lions. They get the ball in the paint to Campbell. He leaves it for Garby. Now right side, right wing to Hindu, Connor Henderson. Up top to Johnson, pass down on the right block to Fidel Campbell. Can't make anything of it, throws the ball away. Third turnover on the Lions. Quickly the other way, that is... Um, Hunter Smith that uh, slides, loses his footing, and actually I think he may have rolled that ankle a little bit as uh, Randy Smith-Peters is going to go to his bench and bring in uh, Richard Drew. And Hunter Smith is going to get checked by the tr trainer. I he think he Smith, lost his footing and just kind of slipped. But I think I was told before the game that Smith, this may be his first game back in some time because of a, a injury, so hopefully he didn't re-injure what he had before. He's down uh, looking, uh, being looked at by the uh, Harrisburg training staff just below us to our right. Carterville has the basketball. It's four to nothing Bulldogs with uh, 525 remaining. Justin Johnson finally gets the ball in to Hindu. He throws it back to Johnson. Johnson works his way across midcourt. He is guarded defensively by Isaiah Thompson. That's a good matchup right there. Johnson and, and uh, Salisbury all night long as uh, Carterville turns it over again. Four turnovers now. As they work it right side, they get it to Drew. Drew up top to Storms. Backs it up with a left-hand dribble between the legs, back and forth, guarded by Valerius. Puts the shoulder down, gets it into the paint to Bartow. He puts it up, banks it home. His first bucket of the game, it is six to nothing, Harrisburg. Bartow just used his strength, bumped Campbell enough to knock him off balance and got, got it to go in off the glass. Carterville finally breaks the press. Gets it into the front court. Valerius to Henderson. Johnson's going to fire from three. Good for Justin Johnson. Carterville finally on the board, and it comes at the 430 mark of the first quarter. Anytime Johnson's open, he's got to shoot it. Wide open three from uh, Storms is no good. Actually, an air ball over the top of the rim, and Carterville gets the rebound. Johnson has it now on the right wing. Be nice if JJ could heat up for the Lions. They work at left side. Dylan Valerius stutter steps and drives the baseline, banks it home. Nice move by Valerius. Carterville scored the last two possessions, and they're back within one. Harrisburg has it. Bartow way out top. Dare him to shoot it from there. They get it to Richard Drew, and he's guarded by Justin Johnson. Drew just in for Smith, who checked out for the Bulldogs. Isaiah Salisbury drives with the left-hand dribble. We have a whistle and a foul. That's going to be on Fidel Campbell, I believe. 
I think no, it's going to be on Henderson. Connor Henderson. Yeah. When Salisbury has the ball out on the perimeter, Connor Henderson, <laughs> he's not going to be able to stay up with him. No, I I don't think so. His uh, shot comes free from the free throw line. That was Salisbury. It was short, and uh, the Lions get the rebound. Toward the left wing, that is Justin Johnson. He's guarded by Drew. Now right side to Valerius. Valerius at the free throw line. Backs it up. Needs some help. Pull, stops the dribble. Gets it to Austin Garby. Garby wearing number 21 at the right block. Nice pass is uh, tipped away and another turnover. Quickly the other way as that was Isaiah Salisbury with the flush for the Bulldogs. It's 8-5, to five, the three-point lead. Carterville into the front court. Connor Henderson, right hand dribble around the top, back to Johnson, drives the left baseline, kicks it out to Fidel Campbell from about 12. Good for Campbell. He's on the board. His first bucket of the game. Carterville down one. Carterville's starting to heat up from the field. They needed to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, 245 remaining in the first. Pass down low to Storms. Gets it into the paint to uh, Lambert. He's able to somehow fight his way. He never did have a hold of that ball. I don't know no, how that didn't. happened, but he was able to make the shot, and it's back to a three-point lead for the Bulldogs. Johnson uh, facing some pressure from Salisbury. Gets across the timeline into the front court. Over to Fidel Campbell from about 12, top of the, or the left elbow. They work it over to the right side. That's Valerius. Left, right dribble. Spins back. Reverses. Now is going to go top of the key. Reverses and has his pocket picked. And a foul is called <laughs> on Richard Drew. It's good because Drew was headed the other way. Headed, taking it the other way. Yeah, Granny Smith, Peters, coach of Harrisburg, not exactly thrilled with that call. Look like a clean pick from here, but we'll take it. Well, I know one thing about those uh, um, Smith-Peter coaches. They never talk to the officials. No, they never. They never let them know never. You've never how, they, how they feel. <laughs> never. Quiet. Yes. Unassuming. Carterville's basketball, 159 on the uh, first quarter clock. Fidel Campbell on the right wing, needs some help. As he bobbled the pass, he gets it to Johnson. Johnson saves him, takes it, drives right down the right side, right-hand layup, uh, no good, too strong. Campbell gets the board. Nice battle by Fidel Campbell fighting to get the board, and he gets the bucket, and it's a one-point game for the Bulldogs. They bring the passes uh, near, or a swing pass over uh, for the Bulldogs, but they throw it away. That's a turnover. I've got them for two. I've got them for three. But, That's uh, close. Uh, Fidel Campbell already has three rebounds in this game as well, so good start for him. And four points. We'll, we'll take that. Like I said, he, he played a good ball game. Tyler Biddle is in the game. Um, uh, right now gets the ball to Connor Henderson. Campbell's open from 12. That's short. Ball is uh, rebounded by Biddle. His shot from the free throw line, no good. Battle for it on the floor. Harrisburg comes away with it. Bartow is on the run. Gets it to Salisbury. He loses the handle. That is uh, four turnovers. Carterville brings it the other way. Has their pocket pick. That's seven turnovers. Harrisburg brings it back the other way. Into the game. Carson Burtis down into the paint. The ball is battled for, and Carterville comes away with it. That's another turnover. That's five now on Harrisburg. And uh, things need to settle down as we're under a minute to go. They could settle down for both teams, truthfully. Yeah, neither coach probably real happy with the way they're handling the ball right now. And Dylan Valerius has the ball slapped out of his hand, but they say it was off of um, Drew, Richard Drew. It's going to belong to the Lions on the far side. Hey, this Lions broadcast is brought to you by the city of Carterville. Mayor Brad Robinson and the entire city of Carterville are proud sponsors and supporters of Lions sports. 44 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It's Dave McKenzie with Scott Hudson. We're in Hammersburg as the Lions are taking on the Bulldogs. Down one, 10 to nine. Johnson fires from 15. That's good for Justin Johnson. And Carterville has their first lead, 11-10. And that came at the 30-second mark. Yeah, they just need in the quarter now with good defense. As it is Drew with it. Between the circles, he's guarded by Johnson, now to Salisbury, guarded by Connor Henderson. Connor says, I need help. He looks around. Who's gonna? Who's my backup here? As Isaiah, Tom, Tom, uh, Isaiah Salisbury eyes him up. They get the ball into the paint to Lambert. He misses the shot, gets the board, gets it re, uh, shot away, rebounded again, and then after four shots, nobody can score for the Bulldogs. And uh, we're going to end the first quarter as the Carterville Lions have a one-point lead, 11-10 after, after one. 
We'll return. It's Lions basketball here on News Radio WJPF. Welcome back to Harrisburg. It's Dave McKenzie with Scott Hudson where we just end the first uh, quarter and Carterville has the one point lead. Carterville shot 50% in that first quarter, 41% for Harrisburg. Good start by the Lions. As the Lions have it to start play here in the second, Connor Henderson on the right wing with the left hand dribble. Bryce Anderson is in the game for Coach Shane Hawkins toward the left wing, fires from three. Good, Boom. man. That's, that's huge for the Lions. And... Uh, they extend that lead now to four points as we're just underway here in the second. Bulldogs with the basketball. Drew has it between the circles, guarded by Anderson. Right side gets it to uh, Carson Burtis, the 6'2 guard for Coach Randy Smith-Peters. Up top, Drew drives the left side of the lane, dumps it down low, and the shot is good by, that was Dalton Lambert. That's a good play by... The Bulldogs, Carterville still leads by two. Well, when he drove the lane, the defense had to, had to double team him, and uh, he found the open man, and that's, that's a nice assist for the Bulldogs. So they're within two. It's 14-12. Carterville basketball. Johnson holds the ball high, dumps it down on the right block. Fidel Campbell, floater, no good, and the rebound comes off to Salisbury. Into the front court, Drew. Dumps it to Salisbury, fires from three from uh, the right corner. That's his, let's see, that's going to be seven for Salisbury. And it's a one-point Harrisburg lead now, 15-14, and we have a whistle in the backcourt and a foul on, that is going to be Drew, Richard Drew. That's the second on Drew. Bryce Anderson, even though he's only a freshman, he gives the Lions another option as far as shooting the ball from the outside. He's already hit a three in this game, but basically it's been Justin Johnson and nobody else. Dylan Valerius, Bryce Anderson, right-hand dribble, brings it to the right wing. That's where he's met by Dalton Lambert. Now to Valerius, back to Anderson on the right wing. Nice pass down low, or at least it was. it looked like it was going to be. Johnson was cutting through, but Harrisburg steps in front of it, forces the turnover. As into the game is Will Gibbs. Gibbs has it right side, gets it to Burtis. Down low into the paint. They get it to uh, Bartow, and he's able to bank that one home. Jordan Bartow has four points. It's 17-14, a three-point lead for the Bulldogs. Well, if Bartow gets the ball inside the paint within five feet, you just got to hope he's going to miss the shot. Carnival needs a bucket here. As Johnson fires from three, and they get that bucket from Justin Johnson. As he has eight now, all tied at 17. 5.30 remaining as uh, Salisbury just takes it the length of the floor and uh, with the little right-hand runner gets it to fall quickly. 19-17, back to a two-point lead. They've hit their first four shots in the field. Johnson drives the left side of the baseline, gets the bucket, gets the foul. It's going to go to the line and shoot the and one. I think the foul might be on Salisbury. I think that's his second. Nope. That drew. Well, yeah, there you go. Salisbury's first. Salisbury's first. Ah, wishful thinking. <laughs> you know. Fidel Campbell checks out. Checking in is Austin Garvey that just came to the floor. So on the floor is Johnson, Anderson, as Johnson misses the free throw. Valerius, Garvey, and Henderson. Quickly, wide open uh, from the corner is Will Gibbs, and he buries it. Apparently, you can't leave him open. 
They've hit their first five shots from the field to start this second quarter. So Carterville has the ball, goes out of bounds, and it's uh, going to be off of the Lions. That's, I've got them for nine turnovers, Scott. Too many, um, but uh, kind of par for the course for this Lions team. Henderson had Johnson open, cutting to the basket, and he waited a split second too long and threw it behind Johnson. So to the right side, Harrisburg goes. Down low, they get it to uh, William Sanders, and he gets fouled and is going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Foul is on number three. That is Dylan Valerius. So that's going to be the fourth team foul on the Lions. At the line. Is uh, William Sanders. Gets his first point of the game. Sanders is a 6-1 forward. Good sized boy too. Yes, he is. Second free throw, rims out. Carterville gets the rebound, though. Johnson has it. Left, right dribble across midcourt, right side to Anderson. Anderson with the left-hand dribble. Left uh, elbow is Henderson, misses, no good. Salisbury gets the rebound, and here go the Harrisburg Bulldogs to the right side to Sanders. Down low, they get the ball to, I believe that's Lambert that's on the floor. It is, and um, we got a whistle and a foul on Carterville. Well, this is what I would call Harrisburg's meat and potato lineup. They've got some big boys in there right now. And in the mix there on that scrum on the on the floor is Bryce Anderson. That's who the foul yeah. was on. Uh, as a nice pass down low to Sanders. He's able to convert that. His uh, first field goal of the game, the assist would go to Salisbury, and it's a 25-19 six-point lead for the Bulldogs. Johnson fires from three off the iron, no good, and it's Gibbs that comes away with the rebound. He's going to take it on the run. All the way, the length of the floor, runs over Bryce Anderson, no whistle, no call, and uh, Salisbury fires from three, and that's good. Salisbury has 12 already, 12 of the 28, and it's a nine-point lead for Harrisburg. Up top, Anderson's going to fire from three. That's short. Off the front of the iron, the ball goes out of bounds. They're saying it was off of Justin Johnson, and it's going to belong to the Harrisburg Bulldogs, and Shane Hawkins walks out to midcourt, arms folded, and calls a timeout. Says the official. It's going to be a timeout. They're having some type of conversation. It's a 30. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. Again, we want to say congratulations to uh, Matt Crane and the Carterville Lady Lions as uh, they won their semifinal game against Marion at the regional, 44 to 27. Haven't uh, received an update, but Alney Murfreesboro were playing, and Carterville will play the winner of that game. Alney Richland um, would be the higher seed of the two, um, but um, Carterville will play on Thursday night, seven o'clock at Carterville High School for the regional title. Congratulations, Matt Crane and the Lady Lions, 44-27 over Marion this evening. Here, it's 28-19, 3-14 on the clock. Three balls, no good. And the Carterville Lions come away with the rebound. Valerius uh, quickly across midcourt, left-hand dribble, works down the left side of the lane, stops, and uh, tries to pass. It was actually hit by Harrisburg, but uh, they're going to say it was thrown out of bounds. I thought Salisbury got a, a finger on it. But uh, officials did not. Saw it other way. Yeah, they saw it the, uh, a different way. Is there hockey tonight? Yes, there is. Blues are up two to nothing in Nashville. In let's go to Nashville yeah, as soon as we're done here. Okay, you're driving. All right. <laughs> I got the I got the truck gassed up. We're good to go. Harrisburg basketball in the front courts, over toward the right side. They're working the perimeter as there's 2:40 on the second quarter clock. Gibbs down to. 
Saunders, they're working it back and around. That is uh, Lambert, top of the key, and we have a timeout that is taken by Coach Randy Smith Peters. It's a 30 as well. 28 19, Bulldogs on News Radio WJPF. Back in Harrisburg, Coach Randy Smith. Peters wasn't too pleased with his Bulldogs as he took the timeout. Both teams are back out on the floor. And uh, this Lions broadcast is brought to you by Coldwell Banker Preferred Realty. They are happy to support the Carterville Lions. And there's a reason we're preferred. You can find out why. Located on West Plaza Drive in Carterville. Harrisburg moving right to left here in the home blues for Coach Randy Smith-Peters. Lambert, nice backdoor pass to Saunders. Who, Sanders, who is able to convert, he's got five. That's how you work it, around the perimeter and wait for that opening backdoor. Carterville into the front court. Johnson at the left elbow, kicks out to Valerius. Valerius says to, to Anderson, come, come help me. Pass down low, just lazy, that time, or just slow. <laughs> it's, uh, and it's a turnover on the Lions. Harrisburg gets it to Salisbury, and he converts. Yep, Bulldogs have got their mojo going now. And they've got the 32-19 lead. Carterville has got to take care of the ball. It has just uh, been killer for them all season long. 12 turnovers here with a minute and a half left in the second quarter. As uh, Henderson has it, drives the right baseline, gets it to Henderson. He loses the handle. Another turnover on the Lions, 13 as uh, Bartow runs, does he think he is? Michael Jordan out there floating, was going to well, get the finger rolled I can tell or? you this much. The juniors and seniors on this team can take a lesson from the freshman because a freshman's not afraid to get in front of the big guys. Yeah. He's setting an example. Yeah, yeah, uh, and he and he's taken. I, I said last week he took a, a charge from a six four. Guy. He's five four. Yeah, and he hung in there and he took a charge uh, from uh, Boston. You know, when you take a charge, when you're five foot whatever Anderson is, and you take a charge from a six foot four guy, they may not find you for a couple of days. He may not even be five four. Yeah. He may be like five two. Bartow makes the free throw, thirty three nineteen, one fifteen on the clock. Second one from Barto. Deep knee bend on the free throw. Off the back of the iron, no good. And it's Tyler Biddle that uh, grabs the rebound. Johnson across midcourt, takes it to the free throw line. Passed up the shot, passes off, gets it back, shoots short, no good. And uh, Biddle battles and is bumped and a whistle and a foul. And that is going to be on uh, William Sanders of the Bulldogs. 9 of 11 from the field for Harrisburg in this second quarter. That's, that's pretty that's good. That's respectable. Yes. <laughs> you know, eh, it's okay. It's okay. You know, they need to work on it a little yeah. bit. but 80%. That's, yeah, you know. Uh, what were you doing the other 20? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I would come home from school with an A-. minus. Why didn't you get an A+. Yeah, there you go. That's how it is. Biddle has it for the Lions. Under a minute to go. 35 seconds to be exact. Henderson had, uh, has the ball. Gets it to Biddle. Carterville's going to hold for the final shot. Justin Johnson out top. He's guarded by Sanders. Into the paint. Valerius turns around. Forces the shot. No good. Rebound comes off to Salisbury. So now Harrisburg will have the chance for the final shot. They get it to Gibbs. Gibbs has it between the circles, gets it back to Salisbury. He's going to set the offense for the Bulldogs. Seven, six, five. Gibbs to Salisbury. Fires from three. Good. Seventeen first half points for Isaiah Salisbury. It is thirty-six to nineteen. Harrisburg with the lead. Halftime show brought to you by the Wild Hog is next on News Radio WJPF. Hi, this is Les Lane, commercial lender with People's National Bank. Our commitment to the local economy is. <laughs> 
I'll go 90, 90, 90. We understand that your livelihood is small business, agriculture, oil and gas, the coal industry, and the various industries of the okay. area. At People's National Bank, we believe that investing in our communities will help ensure future generations can continue to thrive and enjoy Southern Illinois. If you're looking for a community bank that is committed to you and your business, stop by and see me in our Carterville location. People's National Bank, proudly serving Southern Illinois since 1909, member FDIC. For over 30 years, Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating of Carterville has proudly served Southern Illinois. Charlie's has earned their customers' trust, and they welcome the opportunity to earn yours. No job is too big or too small for Charlie's. Ask about their preferred service agreement for any brand and how it saves you money. Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating is a certified York dealer. Located is in downtown Carterville. Call 985-2502. Online at charliesairconditioningandheating.com. Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating. Proudly supporting the Carterville Lions. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. Joe's Lawn Service Carterville is a locally owned and operated business serving Southern Illinois for over 20 years, specializing in much more than commercial or residential lawn care. Joseph McMahon and his crew can do stone removal, bush hogging, tree trimming, or tree removal, landscaping maintenance, and much more. Call 534-8148. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. 534-8148. That's 534-8148. Halftime at Harrisburg, 36-19. It's all Harrisburg. You know, at the end of the first quarter, Carterville was leading by one, 11-10. And then Harrisburg goes on a 16-point run there in that second quarter. Yeah, Carterville only had eight points in that second quarter. And yet again, another game where Carterville doesn't get to the 20-point mark in the first half of a game. Harrisburg shot 62% in the first half. They only had 41% at the end of the first quarter. They were 10 of 12 from the field in that second quarter. Carterville, who shot 50% in the first quarter, ended up shooting 42% for the first half. Rebounding, Carterville out-rebounded Harrisburg 11 to 9. Salisbury led Harrisburg with three. Biddle and Campbell led Carterville with three. Unofficially turnovers, I had Carterville for 12, Harrisburg for five. But the second quarter was not very kind to the Lions. When you look at the scoring for the Harrisburg Bulldogs, of course, led by Isaiah Salisbury, he had 17 first half turnover points for the uh, Harrisburg Bulldogs. It was William Sanders with five, it was Dalton Lambert with six, and uh, Jordan Marto with five, and Gibbs gets on with a three pointer. Um, for the Carterville Lions. Carterville uh, scoring, Dylan Valerius with two. Justin Johnson has 10 for the Lions, and Fidel Campbell has four. That's it, 19 points for the Carterville Lions. Well, we talked about the good start, and that's what Carterville got off to. They got a, a very good start. They had the lead at the end of the first quarter, and now you wanted to see how they were going to respond in the second quarter. Defensively, it just wasn't there in the second quarter. 10 of 12 from the field for Harrisburg. Salisbury hits the big three at the end of the second quarter to kind of cap off what was a, an exceptional shooting performance by Harrisburg in the second quarter. Now all of a sudden you look up at the scoreboard, you're down 36 to 9, you're down by 17 points, and you led, you led by one at the end of the first. So you got outscored by 18 points in that second quarter. And it's turnovers, 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 yeah. turnovers, turnovers. It's uh, 13 first half turnovers for the Carterville Lions. They just are killer. And, you know, every you have to value every possession of the ball. You don't get that many of them. Um, and, uh, you know, whether it's a bad pass, whether it's, you know, you see somebody cutting down the lane and you, you are intending to get the ball to them, but it's just a split second behind them too late and Harrisburg take and Harrisburg they've got Bartow out running the point on a, on a break yeah. in transition and they're able to score and convert 36 to 19 here at the half we're going to go on and take a break hey this uh, halftime show is brought to you by our friends at the wild hog the wild hog that's a y right there off of w wild with a y right off of route 13 in carterville that's your carterville post game headquarters and i can tell you that uh if you head over there tomorrow for valentine's day maybe you're going to take somebody you're going to take the wife out for dinner actually she's going to be going out of town on business so there you, I, you I liked out, didn't and, you? And you know what? I went out last week and got a Cupid outfit, and now I'm not going to have anybody <laughs> show it to. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> well, 
I what promise that, you, Dave. I promise that you won't see <laughs> Scott Hudson in his Cupid outfit at the Wild Hog tomorrow evening. That's not part of what they're doing, but they are going to have roses there from uh, beautiful roses that uh, you would like to go celebrate uh, Valentine's with your loved one. Do so. I promise you, Bob Bell and the girls there and the gang at uh, the Wild Hog, they'll take good care of you. Drink specials every day, food specials every day. They, if you like sports, it's a great environment to go watch sports. And uh, but tomorrow, it's all about uh, about your about your significant other. Stop by, check it out. It's the Wild Hog, Wild with a Y, right there on Route 13 in Carnerville. Glad to have him as the host of our halftime show here with your Carnerville Lions. They're down 36 to 19. We'll be back on News Radio WJPF. At the half, 36-19, Carterville finds themselves in a big hole at the half. And uh, Scott, uh, once again, they, they have the lead at the end of the first. They're up a point, uh, but Harrisburg was finally able in that second uh, quarter to get the hot hand uh, fr from the uh, field goal standpoint, and they forced turnovers on the Lions. Yeah, you know, I, it's, we sound like a broken record, but it's the same old, same old for Carterville. You know, poor shooting in the second quarter and several turnovers have led to this 17-point uh, deficit here at halftime. Now, you start the second half, you're down by 17. Especially for the seniors on this team, you've got three regular season games left. Well, a little less than three regular season games left now. You come out and play hard. Play as hard as you can. You talked about it in the pregame. Play with heart. Come out and play as hard as you can. Regardless of how this game ends now, just come out and play as hard as you can and see if maybe you can make a game of this. Well, and I, I don't think there's any denying about this, uh, this Lions team. You know, the, the one thing we can say about this Lions team is they haven't quit all season. It's not been a game where you and I have said, I think there's been one game where Coach was really not happy with the effort, right. and that was at the Midwinter Classic. Um, but the, it's not, they, haven't, they haven't laid down. Don't lay down now. You know, come out and you may not win the game, but play hard and and, and don't quit. Exactly. I mean, for, especially for the seniors, you don't have a whole lot of minutes left in your basketball uh, careers. So come out and give it all you've got. And, and you know, if, if Harrisburg is going to end, end up going on and winning this game, make them earn it. Don't give them anything exactly. easy. This is the uh, Wild Hog Halftime Show here on News Radio WJPF. He's Scott Hudson. I'm Dave McKenzie. We appreciate you tuning in. And you can watch the second half action. Uh, if you would like, just head to YouTube and search Carterville Lions at Harrisburg Bulldogs. As uh, Right now, it's 36 to 19. Both teams are back out on the floor. The officials are ready to go. And we've got a little guy that's going to try a half-court shot for Harrisburg. Let's see here. He's taller than I am, though. Oh, a little mm. bit short. We had a couple there. 
that were no good. Coach Randy Smith Peters talking to his Harrisburg Bulldogs, and uh, Coach Shane Hawkins is talking to his Carterville Lions just below us. Carterville now will be moving from our right to left in the road blues, and uh, the Bulldogs in the home whites. Uh, Friday night, Scott, we're back at home. Final two games of the regular season are at Carterville High School. This Friday night, the Pinckneyville Panthers come in for the final River to River Conference game of the season. They were just announced as the number one seed in the re their regional. Um, I, I believe that was yesterday they announced that, or maybe last week. Um, well, thank God it gets easier Friday night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the Panthers will be at Carterville, and then next Friday, um, it'll be the last game of the season. Um, as the Heron Tigers come to town. They try to backdoor alley-oop to Salisbury. He wasn't able to convert. Um, and um, Carterville takes it the other way. Dylan Valerius puts the shot up. No good. Look at this. Bartow out on the run for the Bulldogs. Takes it to length of the floor. Light right hand layup. Right hand layup is good. He's got seven, 38 to 19 Bulldogs. And uh, Connor Henderson. Henderson fires from three. One of those seniors you were talking about right there. Yep. So the Bulldogs have it. And then you come back and give up a three. You can't trade baskets when you're down by about 18 points. No, you can't. It doesn't work out very well. Carterville basketball. Who was it that hit that three? That was, let's see if I can get his number. That would be uh, 12. Burtis. Oh, Bertis, okay. So, Carterville misses. Inside, the Harrisburg Bulldogs bring it the other way. Nice pass down low to Lambert. He's able to convert. 43-22, Carterville with the basketball. That three by Bertis was his first point of the game. 6.27 remaining here in the third quarter. Carterville basketball, Valerius toward the right side with the left-hand dribble, now to Campbell, right wing. He's picked up defensively by Burtis. Ball goes out of bounds, it's off of Burtis. It's gonna to belong to the Carterville Lions. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating, downtown Carterville for over 30 years. A certified York dealer, they service all brands. You can call 985-2502 or visit online, charliesairconditioningandheating.com. Carterville still with the basketball. 6-10 on the clock. Campbell out top. Now right side to Campbell, or excuse me, to Henderson. Hindu looks inside, gets it to Johnson. Now to Austin Garvey, top of the key. To right side, that's Dylan Valerius. Carterville being very deliberate and patient with the offensive set. This possession down. Justin Johnson, head fake on the right wing, puts the ball on the floor, turns it over. J.J. Upset with that. Finds a backdoor cut to Salisbury. It's good. He's got 19 in the game. 45-22. The 23-point lead. Valerius right side to Campbell. Toward the right pocket. Ball's tipped out of bounds off of Bartow. It's going to belong to the Lions. Yeah, Bartow seems to be everywhere on the floor. He's on the inside. He's on the outside. He's running the break. Selling popcorn? Yeah, selling popcorn. You need to put a little bit more salt on mine, by the way. Ooh. <laughs> oh, thank God for Vaseline lip balm. <laughs> and, and, and soda. <laughs> <laughs> Carterville ball, and uh, Henderson just throws it right to Drew, takes it the other way, gets it to Burtis, and he travels with the ball. And that is the sixth turnover, the first in the second half on the Harrisburg Bulldogs. Burtis says, wait a minute, I saw LeBron James just do that last night, and they didn't call it. <laughs> I believe Drew may have got hit in the head. He was taking, I think he took an elbow. He's guarded, he's matched up on Justin Johnson. That's a nice matchup right there. Carterville has the ball, though. Valerius, left-hand dribble, top of the key, works it toward the left wing, needs some help now as he pulls up the dribble. Finally gets it to Campbell, throw it, was it or tried to get it to Bedell. It's turned over. That's three in the second half. Isaiah just rolls and finger rolls the ball in the paint. And is going to go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. Salisbury is a type of player that when he gets the ball, he can get to the paint and he can cause problems. If he doesn't get the if he doesn't make the shot, he's going to draw the foul. He's just so smooth with the ball. Plus, he's got great court awareness yeah. around him 
and he can dump the ball off to, to the open man. You know, he averages 19.2 points a game, but he's he's not a selfish player. I mean, he, no. he almost seems like you'd rather pass the ball than shoot it. He made the first free throw. That put him at 20. Second one is on the way. He's got 21. 47-22. 25-point lead for the Lions. Valerius. Steps across the logo. Now to Garby, to Justin Johnson. Johnson on the right wing. Back to Garby, top of the key. Terrible pass from Garby. Just um, no sense of urgency as the bucket is made by Harrisburg's Salisbury. Now he, missed the, he missed the initial layup, but he got it, stayed with it and got his own rebound, put it back. Johnson drives the left side. His shot is blocked, but he gets the foul and is going to go to the line and shoot free throws as it was Richard Drew that got him on the wrists. You know, another thing we've talked about this year, Dave, with Carterville is there are teams that can have bad games as far as turnovers, but they usually have enough offensive ability that they can come back from those turnovers. Carterville does not have that luxury. They are not a very good shooting team from the field. If you turn the ball over a lot, that's extra opportunities you're giving the other team, and you just cannot do that night in, night and out. And that is exactly why Coach Shane Hawkins is, has really talked about that, All you know, that's, you know, points off turnovers. Number one, you're giving them extra possessions. And the good teams will score uh, on the points off turnovers. Like Harrisburg is doing here tonight as the shot is up. And then it's uh, rebounded and put back by Burtis. He's got five in the game. But it's, it's you know, every possession is valuable. As Carterville works it down, Garby misses the bunny. Ball comes out top to uh, Dalton Lambert, and he takes it and runs across midcourt with it. Gets it to Burtis. Burtis drives in the paint. Little hop, step, jump, good layup. That, too easy. Nobody cut him off when he got the ball atop the key. They just let him go. 53-24. 29-point lead for the Bulldogs. Austin Garby fights his way in. Misses the shot, but Fidel Campbell's there to clean it up. He's got six in the game, 53-26, 3-18. Skip pass to Burtis, fires from three off the front of the yard, no good. Austin Garvey grabs the rebound and throws the pass right to Drew, who misses the shot. The ball is uh, rebounded by Valerius. It's off his off of the, um, excuse me, Salisbury, and it's going to belong to the Carterville Lions. I've got Carterville for five turnovers here in the third quarter, only one for Harrisburg. So that, uh, we got to be within probably one. I've got Carnival for 17 for the game. Yep. It's about right. Carnival basketball, Bryce Anderson just checked in for the Lions. Tyler Biddle just checked in for Carnival. He has it to Campbell, now to Johnson. Also in the game, number 44 for Carnival. Do you have him? I don't, we'll have to look. Don't have a 44 on Carterville's, uh, well. Is there a JV? Eric, Eric Bybee. Eric Bybee, yes, that's who it is. Carterville has the ball. Eric is a freshman, I believe. We saw him play the JV game, and he looked pretty good at times. Yep, yeah. yeah, he does. Forty-four Bybee. Carterville turns it over. One more time, passing the back for it is uh, tipped away, and it's uh, Will Gibbs that's able to get out on the break with Salisbury and uh, is the recipient of a nice pass. Lays it home, 55-26, 157. Bryce Anderson takes it, left-hand uh, drive. Layup is no good. The ball's out of bounds. It's off of Harrisburg. It's going to belong to the Carterville Lions. You and I have to choose our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game in our post-game show. As Justin Johnson comes to the bench, Connor Hawkins is going to check in. Coach Shane Hawkins is going to the bench. 55, 26, 153 remaining in the third. Also Cameron Hall in the game. Connor Hawkins up top to Anderson. 
as uh, Tyler Biddle has his shot blocked, top of the key. It winds up in Connor Hawkins' hands. He fires from three, no good. Uh, Bybee gets the rebound, puts the shot up. It's blocked, and here come the Harrisburg Bulldogs. They get it to Gibbs. He gets fouled as he takes it to the rack. It's Bryce Anderson that got into him with the body, and uh, Will Gibbs is going to be at the line shooting a couple of free throws as uh, Jordan Barto is going to check back in for Coach Randy Smith-Peters. 129 on the third quarter clock. Will Gibbs at the line. First one is on the way. Rims out. This line's broadcast brought to you by Coldwell Banker Preferred Realty, where they're happy to support Carterville Lions Sports. There's a reason we are preferred. You can find out why located on West Plaza Drive in Carterville. Second from uh, Gibbs is in the air, and it's good. He's got six for Harrisburg. 56, 26, 30 point lead. Carterville ball making our way toward a minute 20 remaining in the third as uh, Carterville got away with a walk, but uh, no call. Bryce Anderson drives the left low block, has a reach in foul by the Bulldogs. Yeah, if there's an opening there, you might as well take it. Maybe you'll pick up a foul. Maybe you'll get an open shot. It's going to be the second team foul on the Bulldogs. Carterville with two fouls, team fouls. Inbounds pass, tipped away. Another whistle and a foul. This time it's going to be on Richard Drew. That may be his fourth. It is his fourth. So Carterville's going to try and trigger one more time. They get it to Bybee. And Anderson's going to fire from three. That's off the iron. Nice battle for the board inside. Bybee gets a shot off. No good. Another rebound and another foul. As the official was animated in his... <laughs> 42, Barto. the well, second he, on Jordan Barto. See, he does it all. He even fouls. Yeah, well, the official knew he was on the live stream tonight. He wanted to get, you know, he wanted <laughs> to make sure he was noticed. <laughs> uh, Bybee misses the little uh, five-footer. No good. Here come the Bulldogs. The other way. Wide open. That's Gibbs to Salisbury. Salisbury, crossover dribble at the right elbow. Puts the shot up. No good. Gets his rebound. Lays it home. Just stayed with it. 58-26, 32-point lead, 42 seconds left. Bybee in the paint, kicks out to uh, Tyler Biddle, can't handle it. Salisbury, or uh, yeah, Salisbury came up with it, but he stepped out of bounds. It's going to belong to the Lions. Salisbury still playing hard, even with this big lead. And 25 points. Yeah. I would imagine that Randy Smith-Peters, Smith -Peters, I'll get it, he may go to his bench here in the fourth. Yep, I think so. Carterville, ball. Tyler Biddle, right wing. Now to Connor Hawkins. They work it left side to Bryce Anderson. Around the top, Bybee hands it to Hawkins. That is Carson Pearson in the game. As Bybee gets fouled, trying to make a spin move on the right block. Reversed his uh, pivot. Ran uh, right into Gibbs, Will Gibbs of Harrisburg. That's his second, 15 foul on the Bulldogs. Ball comes out top to Pearson. Pearson toward the right wing, drives it in the paint, tries to get the pass over to the far side. That's where uh, Bybee is, Eric Bybee. Goes out of bounds. Still 8.8 .8 seconds remaining here in the game. Harrisburg will go to the Lawrenceville Regional next week. They will play Robinson. Harrisburg, the number two seed at Lawrenceville. Mount Carmel, the number one seed. It's a tough regional. Yes, it is. Right there. We, uh, oh, steal on the inbounds pass with six seconds on the clock. The left-hand layup by Drew is good. His first bucket of the game, Scott, 60 to 26, Harrisburg. At the end of three. Fourth quarter action is coming up next on News Radio WJPF. Call Sad Outlet Plumbing in Carterville at 985-2021. Online at Sad 
Welcome back to Harrisburg, 60-26 at the end of the third quarter. As we head to the fourth, Scott. It got ugly quick. 16% shooting for Carterville in the third, 62% for Harrisburg. Carterville has the ball in the, the front court as we begin play. Top of the key, Connor Hawkins. Bybee has it left wing. Now they work it around to the right side. Drives into the paint. Hawkins fires from three way short as uh, Will Gibbs gets the rebound. Quickly the other way, gets it to Drew. Drew's bump from behind. No, he double dribbles. And that's going to be a turnover. That's the second turnover on the Harrisburg Bulldogs here in the second half. Yeah, they've, they haven't done much wrong in this second half. They've shot the ball well. They continued that from the second quarter. It's been a route since uh, about halftime. Hawkins left wing. Right-hand dribble out top, has his pass slapped away. And the other way is Will Gibbs, who gets the layup. He's got eight in the game. 62-26. Tyler Biddle, spin move in the paint, puts the shot up, gets the bucket, and the foul. The shot will count. The foul is on uh, number 11. That is going to be Burtis, his first. As Tyler Biddle gets the bucket, we'll go to the line and shoot the end one. Before that field goal, or that field goal ends a run of one of 13 from the field for Carterville. Wow. Tyler Biddle, number 23, free throw, rims out, and the Bulldogs get the rebound. They bring it the other way. As uh, Burtis loses the handle, that's uh, two possessions in a row with a turnover for the Bulldogs. Let the comeback begin right here. Tyler Biddle. Left-hand dribble, gets it to Cameron Hall, who's in the game. Back to Biddle. Biddle drives, leaves it for Bybee. Bybee kicks it over to the right side. Nice move inside the paint. Shot no good as uh, Cameron Hall kind of lost the handle on it going in. Harrisburg comes away with it the other way. Quickly into the front court. 6.20 remaining in the contest. Scott and I will name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game on our Wild Hog postgame show. The pass, Carterville forces another turnover. That's three possessions in a row, a turnover on the Bulldogs. They come back the other way. The Lions with the basketball moving right to left as it is Pearson. Gets it to Hall. Has his uh, shot stripped. Goes the other way. And the layup by uh, Burtis is good. He's his ninth point of the game. We have a timeout. That is taken by Coach Shane Hawkins. It's going to be a full. We'll take a break as well. You're listening to Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. Lions broadcast is brought to you by the City of Carterville, Mayor Brad Robinson, the entire City of Carterville, proud sponsors and supporters, Carterville Lions Sports. Don't forget the Carterville Lady Lions will be uh, in action 7 o'clock on Thursday when they play for the regional title at Carterville High School. Still haven't heard as a uh, floater right-hand uh, shot is good, I believe. Bybee. Is that Bybee? Yep. He gets the floater. 5.30. But anyway, haven't heard who won uh, the second game 
at the uh, regional. Let's see if I can get a, an update on that as the shot is no good for Harrisburg. But Carterville turns it over again. Nine second half turnovers. Shots no good by the Bulldogs. Carterville comes away with the rebound. Four under five to go, 455 remaining. Carterville has it in the front court. Bybee pulls up the dribble. Nice pass to Nick Laird. He kicks it out to Pearson, and he leaves it for Bybee. Bybee on the right wing. Pulls up his dribble, needs some help, finds Laird driving down the lane. He misses the layup, and the Bulldogs get the rebound. Gibbs gets it into the paint to Sanders, who fires it out top. The three ball from Storm's no good. Drew saves it. They work it around. Back to Gibbs. Pass in the paint to Sanders, to Drew, to Storms, who fires from three. No good. The ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to belong to the Carterville Lions. Well, I'll say one thing. With this big lead, 64 to 30, Harrisburg still throwing up the threes. You would think that they might run clock, uh, but, boy, they're still firing away from the outside. And you got Drew that's still in the game. You also have uh, Storms, who was a starter. Both of those were starters. 34-point lead. Wow, still firing up threes like their layups. 3.58 on the fourth quarter clock. Carterville basketball. Throw it away. Ten turnovers. Lions broadcast brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating in downtown Carterville for over 30 years. Certified York dealer, and they service all brands. 985-2502, Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating.com. Murfreesboro, upset only. 48 to 29. Wow. So it'll be the Carterville Lions taking on the Murfreesboro Lady Red Devils. Thursday night at 7 o'clock, that'll be for the regional championship. Of course, I don't know anything about all these girls, but that big of a deficit tells me maybe they didn't play as tough a schedule as Murfreesboro that did. That might be. That, and, you know, that... River to River conference schedule is tough. The tournament schedules the these teams play are are, are brutal. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Carterville one of the top teams in the state. I'm actually surprised Carterville is not ranked um, the year that they've had, and they've been. I think they've been right on the cusp, but those two Nashville losses in conference play really, I think, hurt them as far as a state right. ranking. Harrisburg girls are playing the Nashville girls tonight. Yes. That's for a semi, that's a semifinal match as Carterville turns it over. And the layup from Sanders is good. Seven points. 247 remaining in the game. Carterville ball down low. They get it to Bybee. He's able to convert. He's got Bybee's four. played well in limited time tonight. We, saw, we were actually talking about him in the JV game. That uh, He's got nice size, had a good ball game. Carterville forces another turnover. That's five now on Harrisburg. Quickly they get the ball out to Connor Hawkins. He takes it into the paint, misses the jumper from the left, elbow, from the left block. And we're under two, making our way under two. Turnaround jumper from Sanders is good. He's got nine. As uh, the ball tipped around by the Lions, under two to play, 68-32, 36-point lead for the Bulldogs. We'll have our Wild Hog uh, postgame show. We'll name our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal Star of the game. And then we'll pack up the truck, and we're going to head back to Carterville. Got a timeout. Oh, no, just a change. I thought we had a timeout. But um, Friday night, the Lions are in action at home against the Pinckneyville Panthers. The final River to River conference game of the season for the Lions. And uh, we'll have the uh, pregame show starting at 7.30.
Tip off 745, and then a week from Friday, holy cow, that three ball was <laughs> from way out. That was Storms. They get the rebound, though. He gets the ball back. Floater in the paint, no good. Storms gets his rebound, battled, and we've got a whistle and a foul on the Carterville Lions. The Lions will wrap up the regular season a week from Friday night when uh, cross-county rival Heron will uh, come uh, to Carterville for senior night. Say goodbye to our seniors. Come out and support the boys um, as we are making our way toward the end of the regular season for the Carterville Lions. 68-34, minute 20 on the clock. Harrisburg just works the ball around the perimeter. Try to get the cutter. Pass up the shots. Down into the paint, right low block. They'll work it back around the left side. As we have 65 seconds remaining, I'm Dave McKenzie, Scott Hudson. Here with me, ball goes out of bounds. We appreciate you listening to uh, Carterville Lions Sports on News Radio WJPF, or if you're one of those that they that watch the games on our YouTube channel, we appreciate you doing that. Glad we're able to bring you the games on, on YouTube. As a three ball from the left corner is uh, good. That was uh, Carl Russ that buried that. And Carterville has the basketball, 45 seconds remaining. 71-34, Carterville, Cody Rector over to the right side. Bring it back out top, swing pass, left wing. Drive it into the paint, shots up, and uh, no good, but a foul. And uh, so at the line is going to be Cameron Hall. Thought the Harrisburg foul. might run the timeout, but open three, fire away. Thank you. Shot no good from the free throw line. 32.9 seconds left. Second from Hall. Good. Cameron gets on the board for the Lions. Harrisburg has it. Under 30 to go. Right corner pocket to Gibbs, right wing to Storms. Storms back to Gibbs, Gibbs drives, gets the ball in the paint. 10 seconds to go, three ball from the top of the key, no good. Rebound is controlled by Hall for the Lions, and we have a whistle and a foul, and Cameron Hall is gonna go to the line and shoot a couple of free throws. The one and one. As the foul is called on uh, Jaden Ziegler. Six seconds remain. Dave, you need to get you some turquoise shoes like uh, I do Mr. need some Storms. turquoise shoes. I'd wear them proudly. First one from Cameron Hall is good. But then I'd have to get a turquoise shirt. Now, that yeah, may not be as good. I know. And a polka dot tie. <laughs> what makes you think I don't have one of those? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen some of your pictures on your Odie show on Saturday, so I'm guessing you probably do. <laughs> 70. That shot's no good. 71. 37. It was all Harrisburg from the second quarter on. Wild Hog. Post game shows next on News Radio WJPF. Three and three. Sounds good. Thank you. 
two of them from two sides, Charlie. I think I can slip out through this agreement for any brand of home station money. Charlie's air conditioning and heating is a certified York dealer. Located in downtown Carterville. Call 985-2502. Online at charliesairconditioningandheating.com. Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating. Proudly supporting the Carterville Lions. Why Sun Sales? Sun Sales, Highway 148 and Energy, is the leader in Southern Illinois for truck and car performance parts, accessories, lift kits, tires, and wheels. When customizing your ride, you want options. That's why Sun Sales has access to over 700 vendor lines, including their products. And if you don't have time to install, they'll do it for you. It's not a question of why Sun Sales, it's a question of when. Sun Sales, Highway 148 Energy, or online at sunsales.com. The Subtle Dental Group in Marion is announcing a new in-office dental discount plan. The plan was designed for patients who don't have dental insurance or their employer no longer provides it. An enrollment fee makes you automatically a member. You and your family can start saving right away. There are instant benefits such as one emergency exam, two routine exams, and cleanings and x-rays. Also, you will be eligible for dental discounts on procedures such as fillings, root canals, crowns, and more. Call the Subtle Dental Group or visit them online at subtledentalgroup.com. News Radio 1340, WJPF Barron. Tired of paying restaurants? You're the fan of the menu with Wild Hog. That's Wild with a Hog. Or Sartini and Kringle in the Lab Building. You know the one, wildly appealing. You'll go wild over the lunch and dinner deliciousness, including many smoked specialties. Bring the whole pack of friends and family. There's a cake menu and drink specials every day. Take the whole freaking of a glass for easy access. Your carnival day ticket gets you 10% off for a week following. Tuesdays for Sunday. Seventy-one thirty-seven. the final score, it was all Harrisburg from the second quarter on. At the end of the first quarter, Scott, it was 11-10 Carterville. They had battled their way back with a slow start, taking the one-point lead. But after that, Harrisburg scores uh, 26 points in that second quarter, and just that's where, that's where the blowout <laughs> began. Got outscored by 18 points in that second quarter, and you're right. From then on, it was like an avalanche. Uh, Carterville could never recover. They shot 36% from the field, 58% for Harrisburg. <coughs> Eight, excuse, 18 rebounds for Carterville, led by Austin Garvey and Campbell. Both had four. 24 rebounds for Harrisburg. They were led by Salisbury with six turnovers unofficially. I've got Carterville for 24 and 11 for the Harrisburg Bulldogs. When you look at the scoring, it was Isaiah Salisbury, of course, leading all scores. 25 points on the night. Uh, Burtis had uh, nine for Harrisburg. Uh, Drew had two. Russ had three. Sanders with nine. Lambert with eight. Bartow with seven. And Gibbs with eight. 71 points scored by the Harrisburg Bulldogs. Carterville led by the senior Justin Johnson with 12 points. Fidel Campbell added his six. Valerius had two. Bryce Anderson hit a three. Connor Henderson hit a three. Tyler Biddle had two. Uh, Carson Pearson, two. Uh, Eric Bybee with four points and a nice effort by Bybee there late in the game. And uh, Cameron Hall hit three free throws for the Lions. 37 points for Carterville. 71-37. You and I need to choose our Joe's Lawn Care and Snow mm -hmm. Removal star of the game, and I don't think there's any question about who it is. It's the Harrisburg Bulldogs, Isaiah Salisbury. Yeah, he's just so smooth. We talked about it coming into this game. He averages 19.2 points a game. He well above that average tonight. And, and you know, he, he scores. He is so smooth with the ball, he makes things look effortless. And he's not a selfish player. You would think somebody that scores 19-plus points a game might be what we used to call a ball hog, but he isn't. He's very unselfish with the ball. But when he's open, he takes the shot. He's just very good. No question, Salisbury's the Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal star of the game. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. Call 534-8148. Owned and operated by Joe and Lindsay McCann at Carterville. They've been in business for over 20 years. They specialize in your commercial and your residential lawn care, landscape maintenance, tree trimming, snow removal. They're a customer-oriented business and not your typical rush-in, rush-out service that you will find with other lawn service companies. Family owned, they do it all. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. Call 534-8148. Joe's Lawn Care and Snow Removal. Isaiah Salisbury, our Joe's Lawn Care star of the game. When we come back, we're going to put a wrap on this broadcast as it was all Harrisburg, 71 to 37 over the Lions here on News Radio WJPF.
specializing in much more than commercial or residential lawn care. Joseph McMahon and his crew can do snow removal, bush hogging, tree trimming, or tree removal, landscaping maintenance, and much more. Call 534-8148. Rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. 534-8148. That's 534-8148. You've made it through the holidays. Now is the best time to call me and tell me your new house better. Now for February 29th, transfer your high interest balances to an SIU credit union visa credit card and receive an introductory 3.9% APR for 12 months and no balance transfer fee. Stop at any SIU credit union location or go online at siucu.org for information. SIU Credit Union, where Southern Illinois belongs. Membership required on all subject to credit approval. Federally insured by NCUA. Your local and Oak Park Pharmacy. Family Drive. Wilkin Primary Pharmacy and Carbondale Family Pharmacy, the Center for Medical Arts, are independent pharmacies owned by the Kalka Terrace. Fred has been here since 1971 and feels his success is because of compassionate employees. If you need a pharmacy that cares and has free, yes, free delivery, your Health Mart Pharmacy, Family Drive, Wilkin Primary Pharmacy, and Carbondale Family Pharmacy are here to answer any questions about starting a relationship. They do care. When you first started driving, you probably didn't realize the importance of maintenance for your car. But then, you became a mom or a dad. Aaron's Auto Center in Marion is your one-stop automotive repair shop. Your Napa Auto Care Center, Aaron's, installs quality Napa parts. Make sure your car is safe and dependable. Take it to Aaron's Auto Center in Marion. Hey, Carter Lion fans, this is Jim with Aaron's Auto Center. Be the first to come in and tell me the final score at tonight's game, and I'll give you a free 1899 oil change. Go Lions! Still not visited the Spike Shop Fitness Center in downtown Carterville? You're missing fun and effective classes at the Group Fitness Room, along with energetic and professional instructors for Zumba, spinning, and more. You're missing the benefits of 24-7 accessibility, great equipment, and trainers. And you're also missing the newly added tanning and aqua massage, available for members and non-members. Find out more at the Spike Shop Fitness Center, downtown Carterville. Need a bank that is available when you are? At Bank Hub, we have a digital banking option that allows you to do banking 24-7. Download our app on your mobile device for a mobile check deposit, bill pay, and more. Apply for a mortgage, make easy and secure online loan payments, or shop securely using digital wallet products and visa checkout. Own a business? We offer a wide range of digital business products as well. Things like convenient banking with Bank Hub. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 71-37, it was all Harrisburg Bulldogs over the Lions tonight, Scott. And uh, I guess Friday night we're going to go back at it again. Friday night doesn't get any easier. easier. Pinckneyville Panthers come uh, to Carterville. Carterville's got two two games left on the regular season. Both of them are home. Uh, you got a few days to regroup. Pinckneyville's coming in. Very, very good team. State ranked. Just going to have to go out and play hard and hope for the best. 7.30 uh, will be our pregame. 7.45 will be the tip-off uh, here on News Radio WJPF. 71.37 the final. We'll talk to you Friday night. For Brian R. Power, producer and engineer back at the studio from our partner Scott Hudson right there, I'm Dave McKenzie. We'll talk to you Friday night, the second to the last game of the regular season for the Carterville Lions. At home, 7.45 is game time. We'll talk to you Friday right here on News Radio WJPF. See ya. We will. Thank you, sir.